Hi, Erwan from Motion VFX. In this tutorial, we will learn some techniques to replace a sky from a complex shot directly inside Final Cut Pro using MTracker 3D. As we will use MTracker 3D, we will see also how to integrate the 3D text inside the landscape. Let's start from scratch. Here in Final Cut Pro, we can see the original footage with a sky which is not so exciting. First, I will add the shot inside my 4K project. Then, I would like to start by analyzing the footage with MTracker 3D. As I've mentioned before, there are many problems to fix before launching MTracker 3D. We can see that the big part of the footage is composed by the sea in motions with waves and the helicopter. All these elements would give bad information to MTracker 3D, so we will have to resolve this situation. To get rid of these elements, I will remove them by using a mask. I will create a basic shape. I will invert the mask. And I will add a keyframe to be able to animate the various control points during the shot. Ok, I'm done with the animation of the mask. For a better result for the analysis, I will also add some contrast to the shot. So I will lower down the shadows and increase the light. Great, we are ready to use MTracker 3D. By adding MTracker 3D on the shot, we can see inside the inspector that MTracker 3D is below the mask and the color correction. So I will be able to click on the track button to launch the analysis. Little reminder for people who are not familiar with MTracker 3D. MTracker 3D is a complete solution to extract the motion of the camera from a video footage in order to integrate 2D or 3D elements inside the video. The duration of the analysis would depend on your shot and your Mac configuration. Here on my MacBook Pro, the analysis would take around 3 minutes for this shot. When the analysis is done, a blue copy track button is available. I will click on it to copy all the information and you will see that we will use this information later on. As the analysis is done, we don't need anymore the color walls filter and the mask, so I will remove them to keep it clear. So now, let's remove the sky. To do so, I will duplicate the shot by pressing the Option key, and I will place it just below. I will use this copy to create a mask for the sky. I will switch off the first shot by pressing the V key. To get a quick and nice cutout of the sky, I will use a threshold filter that you can find in the basic folder. I will apply it on the copy. On the copy, I don't need the MTracker 3D filter, so I will remove it. The threshold filter is based on the luminance values. It will replace the light colors by white and dark colors by black. I will set the smoothness value to 0 and the intensity parameter to 100 to get only white and black values. With the threshold parameter, we'll be able to choose the strength of the effect. Here I would like to keep the sky white and get black for all the other elements. So I will need to find the right value and not affect the sky. For this shot, it seems that the value 0.35 is the limit. I've got a nice cutout of the island and the sky. As the threshold filter is based on the luminance values, I won't be able to get rid of some elements like the helicopters and the waves as they are white and yellow. So I will need to fill with black these parts. Inside the generators library, I will go to the solid category and drag and drop the black solid layer over my copy. I will adjust the duration. In order to see the layer below, I will deactivate the black layer by pressing the V key. And I will add a draw mask filter on it, so I can draw a basic shape. Like this. I will press again the V key to get back the black solid layer. And we have our mask. Of course, I will need to animate the mask, so I will create keyframes on the control points. Perfect. I will select both and group them with a compound clip. 
I will name it mask. To apply this mask to my shot, I will activate it. I will use the image mask filter. In the inspector, I will click on the drop zone icon and click on the first frame of my carbon clip. As you can see, there is no difference, because by default the filter looks at an alpha channel or we have only black and white image, so we will have to switch the source channel parameter to luminance. We will need to invert it, almost done, as the carbon clip is still below the layer, we are seeing it, so by pressing the V key it will be invisible. So we will be able to add a new sky. Of course, if you add directly the sky footage below, it won't match as we will need to add the same camera's motion. So to do this, I will go inside the title library in the mTracker 3D folder. Inside this folder, you will find many 3D elements and titles to integrate inside your shot, but also there are drop zones, very useful in this case. So drag and drop the drop zone basic below the shot. I will adjust the length. By selecting it in the inspector, I will be able to choose the sky footage as a source. And I will paste the data from mTracker 3D by clicking on the paste track blue button. There is a pop-up window telling me that the tracking data have been imported. We can check the result, but as you can see, we will have to tell where the layer of the sky should be. So I will click on the target icon and select a point far away. I will increase the size and adjust the position. Nice, so now the sky is following perfectly the shot. Let's add a 3D title. In the mTracker 3D folder, there are many 3D titles available. But for this example, I will use one from the expansion pack where you can find more presets. I will get the title 27. I will drag it between the layer of the island and the sky. First, I will paste the track data from mTracker 3D. Then I will set the position of the 3D text. I will switch off the animations in and out. I will adjust the size and the position. As it is a 3D text from Final Cut Pro, I can go to the text tab and modify the texture and the lighting parameters very easily. I will get a texture that will match with the rock of the coast. I will also adjust the light parameters. We have a little issue with the edges of the mask. There is a light blue line visible when the sky is darker or in the front of the 3D text. To correct this, I will duplicate my shot and drag it over. I will select it and go to the color correction tab. I will add a hue saturation curves filter. And by using the eyedropper, I will sample the light blue color. With the U versus Luma, I will be able to decrease the luminance value of this color. I will also use the U versus U to transform the blue to green. If you move down the point, it will switch the color from the right. If you move the point up, it will go through the color on the left. So I will move up to go to the green values. Perfect. Of course, all these color changes are applied to all the shots. So I will draw a mask to limit the color correction on this shot. I will animate the mask. And soft the edges. As I don't want to affect the cutout by the shot below, I will copy the shot. By pressing Shift Command V, I will get access to the Paste Attribute window. I will keep only the Draw Mask filter and click on Paste. I just have to invert the mask and reset the feather parameter. 
Last detail with a 3D text. As it is very sharp, I would like to add a very small touch of blur to match with the shot. So I will add a Gaussian blur filter on it. I will set the amount parameter to 1.5. For the final touch, as usual, I will select all the elements, create a new compound clip, and I will name it CC. I will apply the default preset from MFIM Look. I will add some vignette effect. I will decrease the intensity value. I will add some letterbox. I will add a lot. I can test many. But I will use a search parameter to be faster as I would like to add the adaptation lot. I will adjust also the gamma and the black levels. And we are good. To get more information about MTRAGUS 3D and MVM Look, one address, motionvfx.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more tutorials with tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. Ciao ciao. Bye bye.